Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the weekly live showcase that we do every week, weekly, on the week, week on week. Uh, we got my mom here saying hello from the wet coast of Canada. <laughs> and Simon saying hello from cold San Jose. Cold. Cold probably for you and relatively to what it's usually like because San Jose, isn't that, isn't that like really far south, right? Let's see. San Jose. We'll just do this while we let some people kind of filter in here. Yeah, San Jose is... Uh, uh ah no 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 you're right you're right sorry yeah oh how kelly hey uh no san jose is not that far south i was thinking san diego which is on like the 39th parallel or something yeah san san jose is uh quite quite up there yeah that's right still green california uh how kelly still hot in hong kong yep yep hong kong is uh fairly south fairly south so uh we didn't have uh, much of a transition here actually it went from 25 degrees last week to two degrees overnight tonight uh this morning kind of thing so it's actually uh we didn't have like uh, any transition whatsoever it just it became ice cold all of a sudden it's freaking crazy so what do we have today we have the tolino shine four why is this important it's important because Tolino doesn't make their own things anymore. They haven't made their own things for a long time. They've been utilizing Kobo Rakuten to make their stuff. So this actually is beneficial because you get all of the great hardware from the Kobo in a Tolino form, which means that you get the ecological benefits of having 85% 80, uh, recycled plastic in the actual device body, and you have... Um, the construction of the Kobo Rakuten products. And when you buy it, it actually gets shipped off sometimes from Kobo Rakuten directly. So sometimes this might even actually come from Canada because they ship from uh, Ontario. The only weird thing is that they're actually made in two different countries. This is made in China and the Kobo Rakutens are actually made in Taiwan. I'm not sure why that is because they use the exact same shells, the exact same tooling, the exact same everything, except for the back. The back is different because it actually says Tolino on it. And we are going to give you a uh what do you call it? a top down in a second here um you're just looking at my keyboard i think i have configured it to zoom i did all right so here it is right here we have let me adjust the camera a little bit there we go so this is the Tolino, and as I said, the back is going to be different because it's actually going to say Tolino and not say Kobo, of course. And the software is completely different. Yes, Hal Kelly, it is an, uh, uh, a, what do you call it? Um, an e I'm reading your eco thing. I can't think of the name. The Clara 2E. Thank you. Jeez. Yeah, this is a Clara 2E clone. It's the exact same thing. Everything parallels Kobo. So the Tolino Shine is going to be all the Clara stuff. The Tolino Vision is going to be the Sage and before that the Forma. So they just bounce off of whatever Kobo has. Literally, they're like, hey, what do you guys have, Kobo? And they're like, oh, we got this. You're like, all right. Let's buy it, and they do. And why that's good is because that actually keeps the price down. If they were develop, if they were to develop something right out of the gates on their own, it would be a lot of money. Someone just said something in a different language, and I'm gonna go to Google, Google Translate because I can't read it. And one second, uh, detect language. Thank you for all your work. Greetings from Ukraine. Slavery bombs our cities, but we stand. Yeah, that is so sad. That is so sad. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, we're doing our part as well, and, uh, that's all we can do, you know? Um, can't really, uh, can't really go beyond that, unfortunately. Thank you. Oops. Thank you for your support. Stay strong yourselves. And I'll copy and paste this back to you. And there you go. I think it'll send. There you go. Uh, thank you very much. Please stay strong. Uh, we still, surprisingly, I don't know why, but shipping lines have opened back up to Ukraine in terms of consumer products. We actually have been shipping to uh, Ukraine quite quite frequently actually and um no since i don't know whenever uh, the the conflict started january february or something um uh goody reader no longer deals with um uh we no longer sell 
to Russia directly, to the Russian people, or Belarus currently. Um, it's just, you know, saving face, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's just what's right is right, right? So anyways, um, yeah, the Tolino is actually made in China, but it is a European company. So they have had their own UI and operating system and everything for quite some time. And it is drastically different than the Kobo. It doesn't look like it at all. In fact, there's going to be a bunch of different things like the shops. When you start this up, you actually have to choose a shop from Italy, Netherlands, Switzerland, Germany, or la la la. I can't remember the last one, but there's tons of shops. You can actually choose from about 12 to 15 different stores on this unit, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. Uh, I'm just going to say later so I can go into the Thalia store. Uh, we chose the German one. Unfortunately... Why this is so useless to anyone outside of Europe, because there's no English on the stores. Although there is English on the operating system and the overall UI, the user interface, there is no English on the store. So I can't, I can't speak German. My brother can actually, but I can't speak or read German. So when I click on something like this, translantior, I mean, a lot of it, you know, it's kind of from... I'm not from English. English is from other languages, so you can kind of get like a little bit of sense, pick out words here and there, but it's all going to be German. You can't, you can't change it. So if I'm dealing in euros, if I'm dealing in, like, I don't know what Merkin is. That might mean sample. If I click on it, will I get a sample? Is it a table of contents? I don't know. So there's things like that. So that's going to be a massive kind of drawback. And to be completely honest, there's something we have to say about this. Unless you live in Europe, there's no reason to buy this over the Kobo. We have looked at pretty much every possible outlet. There's pretty much... You know, you can load in your own fonts on Kobo too. So, uh, multiple bookstores aside in European languages, you would have no reason to buy this, unfortunately. But we're going to show it because we do have a lot of European uh, viewers and, and customers and clients of ours. And we have employees of us, of Goody Reader, that, that operate in Europe. So, obviously, you know, we do it. We, we respect the process and everything. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Entertainment. It means bookmark. Nice. Thank you very much. Uh, Mer what, what did that say? Merkin? I don't want to go back to it. Yeah, so um, th there are no real benefits to this. In fact, sometimes when you buy Tolino, you actually get less things. Sometimes they leave out Bluetooth. Sometimes they, they, they change the uh, overall storage size. Sometimes you get 16 instead of 32. So they actually do leave quite a bit of things out on a Tolino compared to the Kobo counterpart. And um, it's... It, 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 it's just I don't know why you would buy this unless you live in Europe and also buying this buying a Kobo when you live in Netherlands or Sweden it can be taxed very high whereas if you buy a uh, a Tolino directly within the EU typically it's cheaper for logistics and taxation and VAT and all that kind of thing so that's another benefit of buying the Tolino stuff and going back to it um, when you when you have a company like Tolino and you don't have to build things from scratch, the price goes down. So if they built this from the ground up, completely from the ground up with plastics and components and magnesium and lithium and all that stuff, sourcing the materials, sourcing the, 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 the processing chips, sourcing where the USB component on the PCB is going to be, printed circuit board, it would be very expensive because they're not as big as other companies. So for them to say, hey, Kobo, we want to buy... 2,000 units of the uh, Kobo Clara 2E. Kobo says, of course. They send them to Tolino. Tolino changes the logo. They change the logo on the back. I guess they would send them to China at a plant there because it's manufactured there. And uh, Kobo products are not manufactured in China. They're in Taiwan. And um, that is why the price is so low compared to what it used to be when they made stuff themselves. So that's why they go with Rakuten and Kobo to make their stuff. So this is the manga experience. The manga experience on Kobo and um, it actually just stalled. Did it just stall? Or am I crazy? It did. Uh, the, the manga experience on the Tolino, the Kobo, and um, things like the Barnes & Noble, it's not very good compared to the uh, Amazon. And we're not advocating for Amazon. We're not paid by Amazon, anything like that, but Amazon's just so good. So this, you can't do panel view 
You can't do, you know, guided view. You can do pinch and zoom sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't work, and you have no fast page turn engine. So there's a lot left out of an e-reader like this. And if you want people to buy your stuff, you're going to have to play ball. You're going to have to add features that no one else has. You know what I mean? you got to have things that make your device stand out. Granted, the bookstore selection is nice. I can deal with an Italian bookstore. I can deal with one from the Netherlands. So that's all really cool. Now, if you're wondering about the screen technology and everything like that, it is precisely, see this, precisely the same as the Kobo. So that's a good thing. That means you get 300 PPI. You get a warm light as well. If you go here, you get illumination, which you can get. Let's let the camera adjust. So that's cold. It's very blue. And that's, it's kind of hard to, oh, here, turn light off. There we go. Of course. So that's really orange and that's really white and you can find a middle ground like that. You can also change it to dark mode, which is really cool. It's the best on the eyes. In fact, dark mode with warm light is doesn't look great, but it is the best for your eyes. That's great. A lot of almost all the white is gone. You get this mud background. Granted, it doesn't look beautiful, but man, that's easy on the eyes. Legit. Seriously, it really is. So let's turn that off because it doesn't look good on camera. Pop the lights back on. There we go. The screen is going to be the same. The way they deliver things is going to be completely different. You don't get the, um, what do you call it? the advanced mode anymore. And Kobo's known for the advanced mode in terms of the text augmentation. They have an advanced mode where you can actually do before and after looks of what it's going to be like when you change everything. They left that out of here. Not that Kobo had any say in it because Tolino does their own software. And actually, they're using Android on this, whereas the Kobo uses Linux. Can you install apps on this? No. You can't. Can you flash the BIOS and do whatever you want because you're a computer genius? Sure, you can do anything with anything all the time ever if you have time, money, and computing power. You can do anything. This out of the box cannot sideload in apps. It's not a tablet. It's not a um, like a, you know Android driven tablet experience with an e-paper screen. It's an e-book reader. That it has Android is simply a, 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 a base for the operating system to show up so you can tap on things. So I can change that and it says, okay, let's change it. That's all it is. And it, don't, don't get confused by the Android. There's no little Android guy here anywhere saying, oh, install APK. No, unfortunately, no. If you do long press on something like so, you get, you know, it's, it's slower than the Kobo. Um, it's the software. It really is. Typically, Android is usually slower than other alternatives. Reason being, they have more things running in the background. That's traditionally why Amazons are so quick and snappy, even with the absence of A2 mode, because they don't need to be super, super fast because their operating system is so low resource. It's, so, it's not reliant on anything. It's just so so easy to work, you know, in, in layman's terms, I, I'm not a computer genius, as I said. So, uh, you know, if you guys have any um, input on the, the uh, transcribing what I said better, but basically there's less demand on an Amazon than something like this that has all of these processes going on in the background. So you have look up, translate, write note and highlight. Translate is good, but it goes away when you box lots of stuff, unlike an Amazon that will still be there. If you do one, actually goes away when you go back that's kind of strange if you do one single thing like so you can do translate but it's several steps the amazon does it immediately via bing this doesn't it goes into this and it goes into dictionary sometimes it's on lookup and you have to go over to translate then you have to choose the language it is in and then the one it goes to oh it's a lot of steps just to translate something so i it's in english obviously so oh there is no in Oh, okay, so it's not a directional thing. And I think I have to download that. I do have to download that. I'm not going to download that while I'm doing a live. But yeah, see, you have to even download the translations, whereas Amazon utilizes Bing for the translations. And why that's better is because it's not like this is not accessing the internet. You just have to download 90 MB worth of stuff for one single language. Whereas if you have a live connection to a translator like Google or Bing or something like that with an infrastructure already in place you can do a translation much quicker. So that's kind of where that comes from. Uh, what else do we have to go over on this? Because it's already been 15 minutes. You guys don't have any questions about it. Um, I haven't seen one single thing in regards to this, <laughs> which is, again, totally fine as per usual. Um, they have something on here that is 
mark as finished, mark as not finished. Typically when you mark something as finished, it goes away into a finished collection and you can say whether you want it to show up or not. For example, watch, if I go like this and I mark it as finished, it's gone. It's like, you don't have any books. And it's like, oh no, did I delete it? No, you have to go to the little eyeball, go down to sort by, choose show finished books, press apply and they all come back. Kind of weird. Um, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you can just move it to a collection and you can put it anywhere you want or add a collection called finished. They just get that going for you, I guess. You can, I guess they don't want it muddled up. So if you're done a book, you're just like, boom, it goes to the finished section. So kind of strange. Um, but again, it's to differentiate itself from the, uh, what do you call it? Kobo line. Let's look at the settings. This is the settings. You have, uh, my accounts and my family, you have Scoob and you know what, other than what Shaggy calls Scooby-Doo, I actually don't know what Scoob is. Uh, here you go. Scoob, Scoob ebook and Horbrutch Frontre. Horin Butcher. Okay. Looks like a digital library service, it says. And um, I believe when they set this up, we couldn't actually access it, which is why we didn't show it in the review. Um, I don't really know. I don't do the tech testing on the back end of the units. Um, I do play with them a little bit, but mostly just to get used to them to do the audio when it gets scripted for me to do the videos. So yeah, you can log in with your Tolino account. You can turn Wi-Fi on or off via just turning on flight mode you have web browser you have settings settings is kind of cool but i would have liked to see a display settings because it's not very clear where the dark mode is you can turn the light on tapping not even on there but anywhere on the top bar oh there you go it actually there you go yeah so um under illumination there is the appearance where you can do dark mode and we showed you that from the the quick access when we were in a book but other than that they should have had a display settings because it wasn't clear that that's where it was numbers lock you can set up a password protect on your unit so that when you go to it you can go you know one two three four and unlock it so that's kind of cool advanced settings has some cloud services energy savings and uh, sleep screen which is really cool oh yeah this is something that the kobo can't do you can actually choose what you want your sleep screen to be. By default, it's that guy. He's sleeping. Or he'll have like X eyes, like he's dead when he's out of battery, stuff like that. You can actually choose the sleep screen to be the last book read, or you can pull from PNGs in your device gallery storage. That's kind of cool. You put anything you want. They also have reset factory settings. They also have something that's useless to you and I and everyone else. Demo mode. If you have a... Oh, look at that. Activating the demo mode deactivates the number lock. Is that a workaround for someone's password? Anyways, if you have like a store and you want to prop this up on display like that and you just want it going through everything it can do, sure, that's great. But I don't know why it's on there so naturally and natively to all the people that are gonna buy this kind of sounds a little bit weird to have you know a demo mode you know who else did this sony sony did this on their devices they had a demo mode it was really weird alex thorne kobo seems pretty good yeah the kobo is a great kobo is a great company they've never fallen out of the big three it could be argued that 2016 17 18 barnes and noble couldn't be considered out of the big three and pocketbook apart of the big three because pocketbook was heavily advancing over anybody else at the time but barnes and noble was falling short barnes and noble has come back in full swing if you've been covering if you've been following our coverage on goody reader you'll notice that they have a bunch of units out they have three variants of the glow light the glow light 4 the glow light 4e and the glow light 4 pink which is really cool lineup then they have a glow light plus which is 7.8 then they had a very successful collaboration with lenovo finally the samsung collaboration was garbage it was garbage back in the day this lenovo one is much better so yeah barnes and noble definitely came uh back in full swing and uh, kobo's never been outside of the big three um in fact I think at one point they may have had very close market share, equal market share to Amazon. 
Um, but they've never really, no one's been bigger than Amazon in terms of the overall scale, the, the, the sales figures, things like that. No one can be bigger than Amazon. Even the, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about Amazon corporation that does web hosting and all that other crap. I'm talking about Amazon Kindle e-reader section, the, the division. Um, when I say Amazon, obviously, you know, Amazon WPS web services and stuff doesn't apply to us very much. So, um, yeah, Kindle is what I mean. Kindle has been number one. They've been number one. They've only had a flop with like the Fire Phone, and that can even be uh, argued that it has nothing to do with Kindle, even though the Kindle Fire was a tablet and the Fire Phone is like a branch of that tablet. But that's drawing too many parallels. It's not. It's not what it is. Uh, we're 21 minutes in, guys. If unless you have any other questions about this, we'll just kind of um, tell you what's going on. Uh, oh, this is what it looks like to read one. By the way, everyone asks us that. Like, what does it look like? What's the scale of the human body and all that? Oh, I'm getting a call. Hello? Okay, yeah. That's kind of scale. That's what it looks like. It's very light. The back doesn't have a lot of grip. It's very nicely textured. Doesn't show a lot of fingerprints because there's very few places for your finger to gain surface area on because it's perforated. Perforated means it has like a lot of holes. So doesn't actually show fingerprints because there's never enough of your finger on the actual device. If it was flat, yeah, if it was piano finish, it would show fingerprints like there's no tomorrow. How Kelly says it used to be Nook versus Kindle back in the day. It was. You were very right. Uh, Nook and Kindle used to be like neck and neck. Um, Nook has taken a back seat for quite some time, and they've only recently kind of come back now. They've always been there, but they've come back like spiritually. And um, yeah, it's, it's still Barnes & Noble. Uh, Amazon and Kobo in the big three. So they're still fighting it out. Um, that's kind of what's going on. Uh, yeah, so uh, the Tolino has a very good construction. Of course, it's the uh, it's the Kobo construction. And surprisingly, you might always wonder, like, why should you care about the 85% uh, plastic? It's because Earth's resources, you know, I'm not preaching here, but Earth's resources are finite. There's not an unlimited amount of everything for everyone all the time. We're, we're floating on a rock with things on top that we pick and turn into other things and throw away in the garbage and burn and wreck. I mean, it's going to run out, you know what I mean? So by taking the things we've used and putting them back into this, you're not pulling from trees and, and the ground and other resin and petroleum-based sources, you know, origin sources, and putting it into here with a fresh spool of black number six. You're, you're, you're recycling things, and that's what it should be. And obviously, I know... The screen isn't recycled and a lot of the components aren't recycled and, you know, the plastics involved in the PCB construction aren't recycled, but it's a step in the right direction. And if you make something with 85% recycled plastic here and multiply that by millions of units, you can see how that makes a difference. If you pick up one little piece of trash, oh, I have such a clean desk, there's no trash. Like, seriously, I'll just grab like a bag. If you pick up one little piece of garbage a day on the ground, doesn't make much of a difference, right? But if a billion people do that, that's a billion pieces of garbage being picked up off the ground. Isn't that crazy? Everyone's got to do their part. That's what I'm saying. Lewis, I'm guessing the Oasis 4 is coming this year. Lewis, man, earlier this month, legitimately, we did a news story on it because one of our guys was on Amazon. We comb everywhere for everything. That's how we get news. One of the guys was on Amazon. He was like, what the heck? And uh, he was in our uh, Oak... Oak Park, Illinois uh, office, a Chicago, Illinois goodie reader. And um, uh, he was like, yo, look at this. And uh, they sent it to me and they sent it to Mike and stuff too. And it was a, uh, it was a product listing on amazon.com. You can go to our Facebook page. It's on there. And it was Oasis 4. It was a placeholder. And before that, we did a video on, uh, no, before that, we did some digging and a news article about all these like... Um, uh, previously searched keywords pop up and like things that it was finding that direct to nowhere. And we're like, what is that? So anyways, we found that someone mistakenly in the Amazon corporation world put an Amazon Oasis 4 placeholder product listing on Amazon. And it had a release date, October 12th. And we were just like, oh, screen cap it right away. And there's like a, um, a URL and stuff too. I think half an hour after that, it went 404 error, forbidden, so you can't go back to it. But we have a picture. It's on our Facebook. That's all the information we were given. We saw that. And typically, that happened before. When did that happen? Uh, it might have happened with the Oasis 3 back in 2019. I'll have to go back to the archives. But yeah, it was a legitimate uh, story with enough supporting evidence that we went to uh, public with it. And it was a real thing. And um, 
uh, yeah, that was all that we knew. Um, it evidently didn't come out. I don't know what's going on with it, but let's think about this. The Oasis 3 is a continuation of the Oasis 2. It's the same thing. The only difference is it has a warm light and it has a rose gold paint color option. That's it. And it's 2018 te technology body. It's 2023 in two months. That will be, that will have been the fifth year, the fifth year of the Oasis, not having made any progress. I know I'm like, you know, moving years around, but you know what I mean? So that's a lot. Cyriacus, Cyri, Cyriacus or Cyriacus. Oh, cool. Do you think there's any chance that the leaked Kindle Oasis was actually a scribe? No, because the scribe, a stretch? I th oh, oh, no, the scribe was already announced. The scribe already had a product listing. It's on Amazon right now. But there are three things that they announced to renew their lineup. The basic, no, four. The basic line advanced the basic, the 2022. It came out. The Paperwhite 16 gig variant advanced the Paperwhite lineup. It came out. The scribe was their one-off Kobo Ellipsa kind of thing. It's coming out. The Oasis, huh, huh? That's why it was there. That was that why that is why the product placeholder listing was there. Someone uploaded it. I don't know why they did with a release date, some arbitrary release date, but there's four lines. There's the basic, the paper white, the oasis, and other, like the voyage, you know, the scribe, things like that. They've advanced these three. The oasis is oh sorry, these ones. The oasis has been left alone. So that's why we thought that oh it's real i mean there's there's product listings and there's like keyword searches we don't do fake news at goody reader we can't afford to do that we're teamed up with barnes and noble and kobo and amazon themselves i mean there's there's nothing we can upload that isn't true we can't do that we're not um you know those one we're not those uh sites that are like they take footage from iron man movies and other actors from the iron man movies that are in other movies and they're like iron man 4 trailer and it's like you know robert Downey jr comes back and it's all like looks really good and it's really well edited we can't do that because we we got too much riding on us we make our own devices for crying out loud so no we can't uh 2023 does sound like the future right how cali doesn't that sound like there's robots running around although there is uh lewis i hope they change up the design of the oasis i would prefer, prefer them to put the bump on the front instead of the back oh yeah 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 kobo with the 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 uh the format did like a little you know what i mean but amazon had this big chunky dunker at the back yeah yeah you're right that's a good idea um they couldn't make the same body they could i hope they don't and actually if you go to our facebook page you'll see the article we uploaded earlier this month and it didn't look like a, a typical oasis i don't know what direction they're gonna go with that they have to have physical page turn buttons because if they don't they just have a big screen e-reader there's going to be nothing differentiating it from the paperwhite which already is scurrying away from the basic because the basics are becoming bigger and better as well the basics already surpassed the paperwhite 3 and encroaching on paperwhite 4 technology so it's this whole thing where they got like they got all these lineups that are competing with each other and they're starting to overlap, honestly. They really are. And, you know, it's nitpicky stuff, but that's our industry and you're here to listen to it and you're here to talk about it. So, yeah, if you're going to play ball, Amazon, I mean, you can't just be like, yeah, let's give the basic a glow light and Bluetooth and a touch screen. And it's like, you can't do that because you're giving it everything the Paperwhite had. Why are people buying the Paperwhite? Oh, because we made it 6.8. I oh, Okay, yeah, that's a good... That's a good idea. And it is. That's a good enough reason. I, I personally think as well. It's a, it's a good enough reason to buy the Paperwhite because it's bigger. It really is because there's nothing else you can do. We're, we're maxing out on e-readers here, guys. Um, We got wireless charging. We got uh, Bluetooth. We got Wi-Fi. Um, some have NFC. And then you get into... Uh, you know what? That's probably why we see so many companies like Big Me and Onyx and MeBook that make devices that are these hyper tablets with e-paper screens because as an e-book reader evidently you're running out of things to put on it you and and people have been taking things away from it since the kindle touch you took away uh onboard audio well that's a feature you can put back if you want to advance your e-reader career everything's got audio now but it's all bluetooth they want you to buy other peripherals and stuff like that and it's a true thing so um, yeah, they need to, you know what, Hal Kelly, I think they got to put audio back. They haven't had audio since the Kindle touch and they haven't had expandable storage since the Kindle one. Those would be the only 
physical things in the tooling of the of the plastics you could put back that you've already taken away from us to make it more worthwhile what are you going to do you remove the usb port and just have everything wireless wireless charging like there's so little you can actually do they're going to start putting note taking on the smaller stuff watch uh speaking of basic do you know if, if it has patreon animations i can't find that answer Well, that's it, everybody. We're all done. No, I don't remember, Lewis. Uh, oh, if only it had audio, audio or bust. Yeah, uh, I love one of my favorite e-readers. You can take this to the bank is the Kindle Touch. It's so cool. It looks so good. It was such a jump from the previous units. Had stereo speakers with a touch screen. Man, and I think it was the first one that had X-ray. It's great. Uh, Lewis, uh, phys um, not physical patron buttons. Um, animations. <sighs> okay you know what here stare at this for a second i'm gonna run to the office right next door i'm not gonna drive anywhere i'll be right back i'm gonna go get it for you hey guys sorry 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 coming in coming in sorry <laughs> doing live <laughs> oh my gosh i hate doing that i hate walking away from the camera i'm sorry guys okay I just took this away from someone that was doing something on it. There it is. Okay, so we got the basic denim here. Uh, let's see if it has Patreon animations. I don't remember, but let's find it out together. Where would where would that be? I know where it is on the app. Like the Kindle app. I don't know where it is here. Settings. The reading options. Page refresh, vocabulary builder. Be right back. I'm getting a coffee. Nice. Lo, we'll be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're here. We're here. Uh, I don't remember, man. Page refresh. Refresh the display with every turn. Will that trigger it? Device options. Uh, display cover, device info, advanced options. Help me out here, Lewis. I don't know where it would be. I have it on the app. Um, you can do a lot of things with the app, actually. You can actually change. Uh, when you have the Kindle app, you can do page turn animations, of course. And you can actually utilize the phone or tablet's volume buttons as page turners. So you can go like boom, 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 boom and turn pages that way. So that's really cool. But I don't know where it is on the actual device here. Let's go into a book and hopefully look at the actual reading settings in the book. Wow, this is really slow for some reason. Okay. So here we are. Let's see. No, I mean, it, it does dither. It has like a dither effect. Tolino's like, hey, you're not talking about me anymore. It's like, no, no, just just go away. No, Tolino's good. We 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 like Tolino. It's just, you know, we got a Kindle here for crying out loud. I mean, come on. Uh oh, 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 I know where it is. I know where it is. Font more. Wait. Wait. No, oh, it's not here. Uh, you got pinion. You got word wise, you got highlight menu, you got book mentions about this book, show clock while reading, reading progress. It can't be in reading progress. No, they don't bury stuff like that. I don't think it's here, man. Layout? No way. No. Font and themes. Uh, no, it wouldn't be managed themes. I don't think it's here, Lewis. I'm sorry, man. I failed you. It's not here. I mean, you're talking about that wipe, right? Like the paper white gets? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I don't see it, man. I don't think it's here. About this book. Notes and highlights. Notes and highlights? It would not be in there. I'm not going to click on that. Don't do not do it. Don't do it. Oh, dang it. I did it. Just in case. Patreon animations? No. Uh, yeah, it's not here, man. I don't think it has it. I don't think it's got it. But anyways, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I know it's a Tolino. I know it's a little bit off of the beaten path and, you know, it doesn't move the needle as much as it usually does for our primary crowd, which is the North Americans and, to a lesser extent, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, UK. UK kind of relevant. It's more European, not, not English, you know what I mean? Because um, it, it's, it's really just like... What do you call that? Western Europe, you know, 
Western mid Europe. It's not really Spain, France, Portugal, Andorra, but it's more of the uh, Italy, Switzerland kind of middle there. So yeah, uh, that's what's going on with Tolino. Uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate you guys watching this and asking questions about it. And uh, yeah, it's all really cool. And I am out of here. No, I'm just going to go over there to the other room and talk with the talk with the girls and boys and uh we're gonna work on some other stuff i think we have um yeah right over there we got the fossil gen 6 that's the latest e ink oh this is my 86 percent chocolate uh i like snacking at my desk but um i do as much as i can to uh limit sugars and uh i don't like sugar substitutes like uh, stevia and stevia and um aspartame and all that crap but uh just less sugar and you know more fiber and stuff like that 86 percent is a good middle ground i've tried lint 99 pretty extreme it's good it's good you take one bite you like you break it up and then they say like stop chewing and you just let it melt and you're just like okay yeah i see i see the the merits behind a high percent chocolate anyways um yeah uh we got the gen 6 coming up we got lots of stuff onyx man oh geez i'm not even gonna talk about that right now onyx just released a bunch of stuff michael and i will talk about it at the end of the month coming up soon in another live thank you guys so much really appreciate it and till the next one, bye-bye.